I know. I love a storm. I really do. Hello, I'm Allison Roman. Welcome to Home Movies. Today we are going to be making a charred citrusy chicken. It can be made on the grill, it can be made in the oven, but the point is, is that you're marinating a chicken in a mixture of tons of fresh citrus, something salty and a little meaty like soy sauce, maggi, fish sauce, Worcestershire. And because of the citrus, there's a lot of sugar in that juice. It's gonna help the skin caramelize and it's gonna be very, very golden brown and like almost burned at the tips and that's exactly what we want. This was sort of inspired by a michelada that I had one time. I was like, I should put a chicken in this. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm starting with a mixture of lemons, limes, and oranges. The reason we mix them is because your orange juice is gonna provide you with a bulk of the actual juice. It's obviously a juicier fruit. It's a lot more yield. You're not juicing, you know, 4,000 limes. Wow, that is such an intense sound. All of that juice is gonna go into our sauce, and half of that sauce is gonna be used for marinade, and half of that sauce is gonna be poured over the chicken after it comes out of the oven. So I'm using four large oranges. You got kind of like 50% orange juice, and then 25 lemon, 25 lime is how I think of it. But all told, we should end up with about a cup of juice. So I'm gonna do a half a cup of lemon and a half a cup of lime. People want me to use this and I'm telling you that it doesn't really do that good of a job. So I got it out because I brought it with me to this new apartment, but I'm letting you know that I don't think that it does that much. Oh, it's pretty effective actually. <laughs> I just feel like you don't, I still feel like there's so much juice left. I think I feel like it's wasteful is all. That's why I don't like garlic presses. I'm gonna put the citrus in here because this is where I'm gonna add the chicken. Remember, I'm saving half for after, but I'm just gonna mix it all in here. So three tablespoons Worcestershire, three tablespoons fish sauce. And I'm gonna grate like four cloves of garlic into here. Wow, was that, is that storm over? What a valuable life lesson. It all passes. If you had fresh chili or a hot sauce that you enjoy, I love adding things like yuzu kosho, which is a Japanese chili paste. This is red yuzu kosho, it also comes in green. I love both. They have slightly different flavors and slightly different heat levels. That's sort of the thing about marinades and sauces is that they can be really concentrated. And that's the point because they're trying to penetrate meat. Unless the flavor is so pronounced, you're never gonna taste it in the chicken. So don't be afraid of this being, you know, intense and powerful. It's not a salad dressing. You could use Tabasco here, you could use Tapatio, you could use Sambal. I wouldn't use like a chili oil. I'm gonna save half of this, about a cup. I'll fish out any sort of bigger pieces of garlic. And this is gonna go on our chicken after it's in the oven. All right, 425. I'm gonna start this in a cast iron and finish it in the oven, so let's break this chicken down. This is a really nice chicken. Where'd you get it? It's from Fresh Catskills. Um, which is a Catskills food delivery service. Um, and this one is from Autumn's Harvest, which I'm assuming is a farm in the Catskills. If you were feeling ambitious, you could absolutely marinate the chicken whole and roast it whole. But I also think that chicken sticks to marinade better when you expose the insides a bit. So I'm just gonna cut this chicken in half. Cool. Are we cool with that? I'm just starting at the breastplate and I wanna kind of hit the breastbone. And then cut through that. This is just a chef's knife that I don't feel too precious about. It's sharp and effective. So there's the butt, and you basically just, there's two large bones here, cutting on either side of those bones, and basically cutting out the neck, the rib cage, the butt. You could also use kitchen shears if you had those. So you have the whole thigh, the whole leg, and the whole breast, and the whole wing. The only thing you're missing is that backbone, which I'm gonna save this, put it in the freezer, and next time I make stock, I'll have a backbone to start with. Now I'm gonna add it to the bowl with that half of the marinade. Don't worry about making sure it's totally submerged. But we're gonna toss it occasionally. Like if I'm letting this go 24 hours, I'll toss it like three to four more times whenever I think of it. And then when it comes to covering it, I just press on top of it. And that also encourages the marinade to come up over the chicken. Our chicken has been marinating for approximately 30 minutes. Um, and I'm going to start it on the cast iron and finish it in the oven. If that is like not for you for whatever reason, please feel free to just roast it like a regular chicken. 
The reason I like starting it on the cast iron is because I've cut it in half, so I can just basically sear two half sides of the chicken, flip it over, put it in the oven, and in like 20 minutes, everything is kind of already done and roasted. This is a great technique in general, I think, but it especially lends itself well to this particular marinade because like I said, there's a lot of sugar in the juice and that helps the skin get really nice and golden and evenly caramelized and a little bit charred and sticky, which is exactly what we want. This is gonna go medium high and I'm just gonna start it in a little bit of neutral oil. This also makes like a very good braised chicken. If you stick this whole thing in the oven in like a shallow baking dish, it's delicious, but that's not very summery. So I'm gonna add our chicken skin side down. I'm not gonna worry about patting it off or anything. I wanna make sure that the breast and the thigh are coming into contact. I'm not so worried about the wing. So I'm gonna let that cook skin side down for five to seven minutes. I'm going to flip it. Just do this carefully. Uh-oh. Oh no. My skin's stuck. I'm just gonna put it back on. No one will ever know. And it's okay that it's not totally even on all sides because this is gonna go into the oven and get color. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the sauce in there. So we are going to see that chicken in, let's call it 20 to 25 minutes. So you're set timer for 20 minutes. Okay, Allison, but I would like one piece of chicken, please. Searing the chicken in the cast iron before putting it in the oven kind of gives it a head start. The skin was really, really dark. The sugars were caramelized. We want that direct heat contact that you would get on a grill, but we're just doing it on the stove top. While we wait for that, I'm just gonna slice the rest of the citrus to give the chicken a place to land once it comes out of the oven. I'm not gonna do any limes just because I find the limes get a little bitter when they get warm. Allison, your chicken is ready. Let's take it out. Whew. This wing tip may be a little dark, but I'm probably still gonna eat it because I like burned chicken. <laughs> but the rest of this is absolutely perfect. Instead of letting it rest in the cast iron, I'm actually gonna let it rest on the citrus so it warms it up and kind of just like the juices from the fresh citrus come out and I've added some extra alongside for squeezing. You could add herbs here if you wanted. Um, cilantro stems are delicious in this. Even fresh parsley or like a heartier herb like rosemary or thyme to kind of just lay on the bottom of this. I'm just gonna keep it really simple and just do citrus right now because I feel like that's all I wanna taste in this dish. It's time for the fist spatula to come out. <laughs> to the one person watching this who cares about us using a fist spatula. And then I'm gonna pour this over. I'm gonna finish it with a little olive oil. Chicken's pretty lean, and with all the citrus, there's no other fat in the marinade. So I think to like round everything out with olive oil is always a very good idea. I'm gonna add some marjoram to this chicken because I have some really nice marjoram, and it's calling to me to be put on this chicken. It's cool to follow your heart. It is cool to follow your heart, but also like, that's the nice thing about going to the market. You find stuff that you're like, wow, I'm, I have to have that. But again, like things like cilantro stems would also be really great here. And because you've already taken out the spine and the ribs, it's really easy to cut in half. But it's, if I do say so myself, perfectly cooked. Oh, the skin hat fell. <laughs> here, I'll put that back. See, no one will ever know. Nobody knows. It stays really, really juicy because we're not actually roasting it for that long, given that like normally a chicken goes for closer to an hour. Also, we've marinated it for a while in that hyperacidic salty mixture, which seasons the meat and tenderizes it. And it's just, is incredible. It really does taste like it was grilled, but it wasn't. You were there. And that's what we call New York summer. When I first moved to New York, I remember being like, I can't believe it's raining and it's hot at the same time. Like my brain couldn't process it. I associated like rainstorms and thunderstorms with winter or cold weather, but not here. Not here, it's like 85 degrees with 400% humidity. The skies, they have darkened. The rain, it is falling. 